A warm welcome from Energia Park in Donnybrook on opening day in the 2020 Women's Six Nations Championship. All six teams in action today and looking to make a positive start. Most will again see it as a battle between England, the defending champions, and a France side looking to wrest the title back this year. But elsewhere, can last season's upstarts Italy deliver again? And is there improvement ahead for Wales, or host Ireland and Scotland, with the latter two also facing into a World Cup qualifying year? Well, the champions England, they'll have to hit the ground running as they open in France, hoping to follow up on their November win there, which was the first win on French soil in 12 years. That one has already kicked off, and the latest is France nil, England 10. Ireland and Scotland both looking for a major improvement this year. They get underway here in Dublin at 1 o'clock, and it's the same kickoff time for Wales, Italy in Cardiff. So a massive day lying ahead for us. Former Ireland captain Fiona Coughlin is alongside me today. Uh, Fiona, this really is a massive fixture for Ireland and Scotland to start with. Ireland have made no secret of the fact with away games against England and France, they'll be targeting winning all three of these home fixtures. Scotland, well, of course, the big story in these parts as they land in Dublin is the return of Philip Doyle. Now, I don't know him well enough to call him Goose, but you certainly do. He was your old coach. You were the captain back in the 2013 Grand Slam year. That looks a big appointment as Scotland looked to emerge from the Six Nations shadows. Yeah, I suppose they saw what Philip was able to do um, with a game where Scotland now is in a similar position with, in terms of development. Um, you know, he dragged women's rugby to where it was in 2013 and 2014 by just getting really good players and getting a really good management structure around him. And that's what he'd be looking to do with the Scottish girls. And, and he's got such support from the Scottish Union, like they've had so many games already. And, the girls have bought into what he's trying to bring into the squad and yeah let's hope for for him that it's on show today but let's hope for Ireland that it's not the team's emerging given that Ireland and Scotland didn't finish in the top seven at the 2017 World Cup they're now looking at having to qualify later in the year for the 2021 edition so a positive showing in this six nations that looks vital in terms of setting the mood heading into those qualifiers certainly in terms of player development getting game time but also in terms of rankings because that qualifier will be based on rankings one will play four and two will play three um, so that's why every game in this championship is really important as well. Yeah, a really good atmosphere in Donnybrook. January warm-up saw wins for both Ireland in a non-cap fixture in Wales. Scotland pretty impressive running in six tries against Spain in Almeria as we take the national anthems.
on a beautifully brisk February afternoon. Let's check on your starting 15s. Adam Briggs, which is six of the side that started the win in Scotland last year. In the backs with Ali Miller hanging up for international boots and Emer Considine injured. Aoife Doyle returns to win her first 15s cap since 2015. And on the other wing, it's the finisher, the 18-year-old Bevin Parsons. Catherine Dane gets the nod to partner Ellen Murphy at halfback. In the pack, Lyndon Chungang selected a tight head. Captain Kira Griffin wears six. Anna Capeless looking to follow up in an impressive 2019 showing and with no Claire Malloy this year a chance for Edel McMahon to lay down a marker. There was mixed news for Philip Doyle on the fitness front. Chloe Rolly and captain Rachel Malcolm are fit to start after recent layoffs. But scrum half Jenny Maxwell lost to a long-term injury in Spain last month. So 22-year-old Mari MacDonald takes the number nine jersey, winning just her second cap. There's an impressive centre partnership in Lisa Thompson and Hannah Smith. While up front Leah Bartlett, one of a handful from Loughborough Lightning in the 15, keeps her place after her debut in Spain. Emma Wassell makes her 40th consecutive start. And they look for a big contribution from Jay Conkler of Harlequins who packs down at the base of the scrum. The Ireland bench includes exciting hooker Victoria Devanovic Omani, who made her debut in November against Wales, and 19-year-old Dorothy Wall, as well as Claire as halfback Claire Kiohan, both in line for their first caps. Scotland can call on the likes of naturalised New Zealander Molly Wright, the hooker a try scorer on her debut last month, and the experienced Sarah Law, who's returning from injury. Our referee for this one comes from France, it's Aurelie Grosselieu. TMO will be Eric Gozans. Well, a huge fixture for these two to start with, the bottom two in last year's championship. But a new year brings fresh hope, certainly a tone setting. 80 minutes lying ahead for Ireland and Scotland in Donnybrook. We are underway by the boot of Lisa Thompson. Ireland looking to secure first possession. Lines cleared towards halfway. A safety first option taken by Catherine Day. Line, yes. You? You. Here. Please. First set piece of the day. And can Ireland challenge the throw of Lana Skelder? Painted movement taken at the front by Sarah Bonner. And now the backs look to go. Good midfield defence from Ireland, led by the hooker, Keanu Maloney. Back fit this year after losing all of last year to a shoulder injury. Mary MacDonald. And the out half, Helen Nelson. 20, 20, 20. Slow ball for Scotland, Rona Lloyd in off the right wing. Here is Thompson. And if she or Hannah Smith can find open field, might be profitable for Scotland, worked on. And Bonner wrapped up. Very congested short side. Good numbers there for Ireland. No way through for Scotland. Mary MacDonald for Jade Conco. Big Harlequins number eight. Mary Forsyth. Scotland struggling to get past the halfway point of the pitch here. A lovely work though from Lisa Thompson. And they're off and running, Megan Gaffney. Vital attacking tackle going in over on that far side. Lana Skeldon met by a crunching tackle for me for McDermott. And Ireland get the penalty. Yeah, really good Not turnover there by Kena Maloney. She's Not been heavily involved straight off the back of the line out. She made a huge hit and then she's been over the ball trying to slow Scotland down. Fairness to Scotland, they were going through the phases, but they weren't making much ground. Good hit here by Eve McDermott. She was up yeah. fast. And then Maloney came in and got herself in a low body position. Scottish support should have been there. Ellen Murphy, this out, out half position has been fascinating over the last few years since the retirement really of Nora Stapleton. It's Ellen Murphy today. Yeah, look, I think that's been one of their Ake's heels, to be honest with you, lacking consistency in that 10 position, getting someone, you know, to play there week in, week out, whether that be a club, interprovincial or international level, that they just get this experience and, and gain time behind them at the 10 position. Tiana Maloney of Wasps with her first line out throw of the day. Maloney gets hands on it again. Here's Michelle Claffey, lovely step off either foot. Scotland lying in wait that time. Dug out by Catherine Dane, Lindsay Pete. Big ball carrier and she gets it away to Ethan McDermott. Scrambling Scottish defence. Led by the scrum half, Mary MacDonald. Nicola Friday. Both Irish second rows already prominent in terms of carrying that ball. Here's Ellen Murphy, Claffey again. 
Taken to ground by Hannah Smith. Dane and Pete took the tackle from Skeldon. Dane looking for quick ball. Seneneupu, 36 today. One of the mainstays of this Irish team, Dane. Linda Njunga. Ireland stealthily making ground inside the Scottish 22. Murphy. Now they look to put some width in it. Adam McDermott, lovely delayed pass. Options either side, Dane. McMahon again, Lindsay P2 over, must be the opening try. Lauren Delaney cuts on the inside. Ireland just a couple of metres short. Lindsay P with a pick and drive. And they keep it amongst the forwards. Well, Lindsay P feels she's over. Time off. Yeah, please, thank you. No. First view, and it looked like a double movement from Lindsay crawling along the ground. For me, Clara. It's not right because we have double, double movement. Right, yes. I come back for the advantage. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yes. Not why right because it's double movement. We have advantage for the assistant not release here. Yeah, it's no, too tempting yes, for Lindsay Pete in that position, isn't it? Not to have that little go again. Yes, thank you. Yeah, but you're that close. I just set it up again. Ireland were doing release. really well. Not using really big ball carriers and yes. they moved it from Puts, one please. side to the other. But really matters. just should have set it up again Puts. and Ireland should have went. They were in a really good position and Scotland were on the back foot. So the penalty from the 22, it looks like Ellen Murphy is going to go for the post. Nicole Fowley was the uh, kicker last year, not in the current Irish squad. Just you could see there where Ireland were trying to do, they were using really big ball carriers, and I think this is what Ireland have over the Scottish team, is the big powerful ball carriers that takes two or three to take them down, which creates space on the outside, which we could see there. Ireland actually had a three-person overload on, on the right-hand side, it, the ball didn't go in time. Well, in our position up at the back of the stand here, there is a little breeze coming in, there always is in uh, Energia Park at our backs, but uh, not too breezy when we walked down on the pitch a little bit earlier. As we reach five minutes, that's a real uh, good settler for Ellen Murphy now. First kick converted, Ireland by three points to nil. And good getting into the Scottish 22 for the first time and coming away with some points. Well, Lindsay P played a, a huge part in Ireland eventually getting that penalty, a couple of huge carries. Well, this was the opportunity for Doyle on the outside, Lauren Delaney came back in. In fairness, it was good scramble defence from Scotland, they were outflanked but they worked hard to get over there. The restart beautifully secured over her head, two-handed by Cleana Maloney. Box kick on the way. Catherine Dane hangs it up there. Jade Conco taken by Aoife Doyle. Megan Gaffney scrambling. One of the try scorers, Megan Gaffney, in a very impressive performance against Spain. In now Maria last month ran in six tries. Mary McDonald. Sarah Bonner takes the flat pass. Scaled in the hooker in there. Looking for a clean out along with Rachel McLaughlin. First kick in behind. And a bounce well judged. Lauren Delaney with the kick and chase. Lisa Thompson spills it. Ball goes back. Still Scottish possession. Here goes Chloe Rolly. Try scorer here in Scotland's win two years ago. Stay! And they look to go wide again. Skeldon, all very tight though. Scotland have a look down the short side again. Now it's Skeldon. <laughs> McDonald and Nelson. Oh, she looked up and she'd eat for Doyle. Staring right at her. The scramble on now, kick ahead. Uh, Lisa Thompson and into touch inside the Irish 22. The Irish defence is putting Scotland under a huge amount of pressure. They're right up in them, so Scotland aren't able to get that pass away. It ended up quite well for Scotland in the end, even though they were under that pressure and it probably wasn't the right decision. Yeah. Time off. Well, will we see a new uh, positive Scotland today? They've struggled in this competition down through the years, lost all five in the Six Nations last year. Indeed, going through their record, the last ten years, they've won just four Six Nations games. Time off. But Philip Doyle, that big appointment coming in after all his successful years with Ireland. 
And he's been busy since he's coming as well. They played lots of games, two test tours to South Africa last summer, Wales and Japan in the November internationals. We feel they're moving in the right direction. Ireland get them all moving as they try and exit their 22. Ball in the hands of Linda and Junga. Day. Nice little step by Kathy again, but couldn't find that break. Scotland spoiling and trying to get over this ball. Dane with the clearing kick. Dropped by Gaffney and Aoife Doyle, the seven star, just didn't have that room to get away. really should have claimed that ball probably a little bit of sun in her eyes but she's standing straight on she should have been standing side on just went through her arms Sorry. <laughs> great chase up by Aoife Doyle she showed all the promise coming through as a youngster then went into the sevens she was had a huge amount of injuries while she was in there so didn't get a huge amount of game time and it's good to see her now back in the 15s game two very exciting yeah, wingers on the pitch yeah, for Ireland today Aoife Doyle has seen the ball predominantly over on her side nothing out this near side for Vivian Parsons playing. yet yes. No, no, please. David Parsons, who played just two games please. in the Interpros for Connacht, no. ended up as the competition's please. top scorer with four tries. No, no. Yeah, look, she's in sixth year in school and obviously studying hard, but she's putting in the time at the weekends and before and after school to get the training in. Kathy with the step on the inside once more. Day. Ellen Murphy sending out and here goes Bevin Parsons. Huge anticipation from the crowd. Taken down by Chloe Rolling. Seneni Upu gains a few extra yards on the ground. Ireland just outside the Scottish 22. Miguel McMahon. Now Catherine Day. Lindsay Peach straightens it up in midfield. Support there from her fellow prop and Jungang. Murphy again, Claffy. Here goes Anna Capus. Keena Maloney popping up in the right wing. Maloney, could she go all the way here? She's almost there, she is there. What a score from the returning Cleena Maloney. And all those days out injured, all those months in the gym put behind her now. Back in Six Nations action with a bang. Yeah, it was again good play from Ireland. I mean, you know, you can see the width that they're creating and that they have players out wide in space. And, you know, you have a hooker with great speed to be able to finish like that and great power. But they went from one side to the other. It was great work here, great pass from Zeni Nupu out into Bavis Parsons. She got a bit of ground. Yeah. But her work rate, she gets Sorry. the offload, then gets tackled. She's immediately back up and straight in for a rook. So it's that unbelievable work rate that gives you the fastball to be able to move it into the wider channels. Here, really good timing of the pass there by Anna. Yeah, brilliant dummy there by Kalina Maloney and powering through the line. She is a little pocket rocket of a hooker. And Scotland, who shipped 29 tries in the Six Nations last year, have conceded one after just 10 minutes. Maybe the most difficult kick of all for a right footer. Just didn't quite have the legs to reach it. Well, what a moment for Cleo Maloney. Backed herself all the way here. Yeah, look, to come back from injury that she's made, she's out almost a year. She's been playing really well in the Tyrrells Premiership for Wasps and uh, back into the squad now. And, and she's an added, great added boost to the squad. She's powerful, dynamic and can play ball as well. And that is a real ball carrying Irish front row out there today. And still with the likes of Laura Feely, Leah Lyons and Victoria Devanovic Omani to come on when needed. Junga gets her hands on it again. Really positive start for Ireland. Lindsay Peach and the gap is there and Pete wants it back again. The pass just behind her to me down that mine. Well, this again targeted by both teams with the difficult fixtures to come afterwards. And it's the one maybe they need to win. And it's Ireland off to the better start. Helen Nelson. Here's the dangerous Hannah Smith, Lisa Thompson. A little bit of confusion in the Irish midfield. Crossing as well. I wonder if the referee saw anything in that. I think it's been given as a forward pass. It's come green. There's a problem. I think it's for Michelle Claffey. Just yeah, as Lisa Thompson crossed, after there was a collision. Yeah. Yes. Do you want to keep an eye out for the next few? That's okay. Yeah, okay. 
Appreciate it. Yeah. So thank you. It's around the rook area here. Diamond Griffin off. was asking about them going off their feet. Let's see it again. Anna Smith goes on the outside line. Thompson. It's her own player that takes her out. Any knee injury, I think, for uh, Michelle Claffey. A couple of ACLs, one on each knee in her history. Yeah. And this was the break earlier. Lindsay Pete had that gone to hand. There may have been something else there for Ireland. Yeah, really bad integrity in the Scottish defence. There was a huge gap in the centre. Well spotted by Adele McMahon, but probably just trying to... I know they're trying to keep it alive and keep the energy in the game, but it's kind of that 50-50 pass that you don't want to be risking. Yes. Seconds! Scotland's win here two years ago. Came after 11 defeats in a row against Ireland. Ireland back to winning ways in Scotland last year. 22 points to five that day. And nearly eight points in the lead here. Now, who can get the upper hand in the first scrum of the day? Scotland looking to get the shove on. Ireland not budging though. Ellen Murphy. Oh, Naupu almost through. That's a vital tackle. Lisa Thompson. A hero for Scotland there. There was open field for Sene Naupu. And a capeless takes it up for the home team. Aoife McDermott. Taken down just inside the Scotland half. Well, oh, the gap has been found again. It's Edel McMahon this time. Irish body is looking to get to the breakdown. Catherine Dane gets it out quickly. Murphy and Maloney. A step to Murphy. She somehow got the pass away. Michelle Claffey. Scragged by Hannah Smith. Both Scottish centres with vital tackles in the last 30 seconds. Lindsay Pete three on two this way. Pete takes it inside. Nicola Friday. Bevin Parsons steps off the left. Ireland knocking on the door again. Ethan McDermott. Takes two Scotland players with it. Linda Njunga. Dane. McMahon. Seen plenty of ball. Here's Kira Griffin. The captain driven back just short. Ireland trying to clean that out quickly. Dane goes right. Sinene Upu is over. On her 36th birthday, Sinene Upu extends the Ireland lead. Again, another well-worked try by Ireland, working through the phases, sucking in that Scottish defence. The ball probably should have gone from Kira Griffin straight off. A huge tackle put in by Chloe Rolly. And the break originally came from Edel McMahon. They set it up and then they moved the ball wide again. And good Thank little you. interlinking between the backs and the forwards. And Michelle Claffey, though, I don't think she was expecting the ball. She's gone in the wrong place, but it worked out. But as I said earlier, the ball should have gone from Kira Griffin out earlier. Senny Nupu backs herself. She's two players outside her and goes over for the try. Yeah, she saw, I think she was faced by two forwards, Sarah Bonner and Jade Conkle, and backed herself all the way. Senny Nupu, a try score against Scotland three years ago. And a try scorer against them again today. Yeah, that's three entries into the 22 and coming away with three scores is impressive. Oh, and that one just inches short. All three kicks from the tee today, really well struck by Ellen Murphy. She's only got the reward for one, though. Yeah, you can just see Senna taking Jake Conkle on the outside arc there. Well, this is the type of rugby the home fans came to see. Drew big numbers to Energy at Park last year, Ireland. Interesting, last weekend, last Sunday, they invited the Irish players' families to the National Training Centre in Abbottstown for the training day, just to bring that extra bit to the camp. Something that the players certainly appreciated. 
those families here again today enjoying what they're seeing so far, no doubt. Almost 17 minutes played, a 13-point lead for Adam Griggs Ireland. Dane, another crisp pass. Ellen Murphy, likewise, Michelle Claffey. Floats one out. Here goes Aoife Doyle. With that sevens pace. Catherine Dane appealing to the referee that someone's lying on that ball in a Scottish shirt. And it's another penalty to Ireland. It's really good to see Ireland playing with such width. They're playing off 10 or out further. They forwards out in the, in the wider channels as well, which shown the confidence in every player that they have the skills to be able to play out in those wider channels. Ellen Murphy, I'm sure she'd like a few kicks over on this near side. Being a right footer on that far side never really has much of an angle to work with. But she started very positively. Yes, thank you. Yeah, she moved over to London this year to play, or Gloucester, should I say, not London, to play in the Tyrrell's Premiership. Not sure how much time she's had, but the level of training that she'd be getting week in, week out would be of a higher standard as well. And just her seventh cap today, Linda Njungang. Somehow ended up in the tight head props hands and she made best use of it, Michelle Claffey. Dane and Murphy and Naupu and Ireland go again. Here's Kira Griffin. Delays the pass beautifully, Bevin Parsons. Hannah Smith gets to her. Dane again, quick ball again for Ireland. Lindsay Pete straightens it up, runs straight into Conkel though. Rachel McLaughlin there as well. An overworked Scottish defence. And June Gang, lovely offload. Dane, Murphy, and they go wide once more, Ethan McDermott. A little knock touch on. off her fingertips, knock on. And a chance for Scotland just to settle things down here. Yeah, look, their their defence in the interior is fine, like they're there, Scotland they're making group? the tackles, yeah. but Ireland are getting front football every time, which is putting off. their defence out wide under a huge amount of pressure, and we can see the space out there every time on the far wing. You can see a few little uh, pockets of Scottish players getting into huddles, trying to figure out how they stem the flow here. Yeah, look, it's tough. It's, it's basically comes down to the first tough tackle, trying to be an offensive tackle, pushing them back, as opposed to allowing Ireland that, that go forward ball straight from the tackle. Aoife McDermott would be raging with herself with that knock on. You know, she has good ha ball handling skills and she should have really got two hands out for that one. <laughs> Diamond, scrum brew. Yeah, please. A long bite, no shoulder, please. Okay. Thank you. Well, the latest uh, from France, England leading France by 12 points to 10 in what has seen uh, by many as a title decider on the opening weekend. Incredible, no side has managed to defend the title since England's seven in a row. Yeah, look, I think on the English squad that's gone down there and what they've been doing in the last year, they'd certainly be favourites, but any team going to the south of France, it's always a difficult task. And England will remember what happened the last Six Nations game in France. Jesse Tremoulier and that last gasp try that effectively won France the title two years ago. Advantage offside. Offside. Ireland offside. A chance here for Lisa Thompson to send Scotland into the Ireland half. And look for a rare attacking platform for Philip Doyle's side 20 minutes in. Yeah, look, they haven't had much ball. It's very hard to defend and defend. And, yes. Um, you know, we want to see them be able to play with the ball. But in fairness, Ireland's defence has been good any time that it's been asked, to ask questions of them. A ball that they need to secure here. Anna Skeldon, one of 10 of the starting Scottish 15. Playing her rugby in England, goes to Sarah Bonner, and Conkel gets her hands in it, and now they look to get that ball rolling. Mary MacDonald orchestrating, and this is good from Scotland. Gaining metres, advantage here as well. Skeldon still has that. Ball is broken up, ball on the deck, advantage Scotland though. Conkel with the pick. She's met by Aoife McDermott. And back for the penalty we go. Number two, side on three. 
Tina Maloney, the one who's been penalised for in from the side. Yeah, really good mall there from Scotland. Really well formed. You know, they got the bodies in the right position and also they got low as well. So it's very hard to start a stop when you get some sort of right. momentum going forward like that. And Thompson taking no chances with her kick. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, Ireland's defence is all on one side and Scotland then just sheer off, but Scotland had the penalty advantage anyway. Lana Skeldon is getting away with one foot on the pitch there as she throws the ball. I think Catherine Dane is trying to point that out. And she's still pointing it out, the Ireland scrum half. Yeah, that's up to the assistant referee, do you know what I mean? The referee can't see everything. Well, Rachel McLaughlin and Scotland try and get that mall go going again. Mary McDonald, the scrum half, having a look to her backs, but... Uh, might be wise to leave it with the forwards here. They're inside the Ireland in 22, and they've got real momentum here, Scotland. Now the scrum half looking to use it. Lisa Thompson. Scotland with another advantage coming here. Mary McDonald and Nelson with the advantage. They're worth the cross kick. Skips away from Megan Gaffney, though. No advantage. Yeah, you'd imagine they're going to go for that ball again. That one was a little bit high. Jake Conkle got very high. She should have worked hard to keep her body low just to keep the former momentum one. with that Scottish pack. <laughs> Number one, collapse. collapse. Yes. One win. No one's ever guilty but that uh, Lindsay Pete <laughs> protesting her innocence. That'd be Lindsay, all right. Sorry. <laughs> How many is that on the mall? Yes. How many? On the, the multi skill Lindsay two, Pete two. Oh, made her debut just a few years ago at the Stoop in what was yes. incredibly just an eighth ever rugby game that she had played. Missed the opening game last year with a shoulder injury. She was uh, standing away to our left-hand side in the crowd against England. Mama, I yes. Here. We'll just have a little look here. Yeah, please. Oh, the captain. We'll so we'll have a little look and see where she's going to go. Well, this has got to be secure and moral again from Scotland, you fancy. Two really good balls already. And once again, Lana Skeldon Two feet on the pitch when she releases that ball. And it's not secured by Scotland. First and second. Two knock-ons, first by Scotland. And Ireland maybe thinking they were about to come under more pressure from that Scotland mall. High fives all around. Ethan McDermott in there spoiling in the lineup. Seems to be a lack of um, the confusion in the Scottish lineup call. There wasn't really a good good enough lift on the jumper and Lana Skeldon was under pressure and fairness Tina Maloney was standing in the channel there screaming that her foot was on the pitch as well. Come on, you. Well that's a heartbreaker, a head scratcher for Philip Doyle. Got themselves into a great position. A chance to pressurise the Irish line. Can they pressurise the Irish scrum now? Well, the answer is no. You will bind. That's the bind, I think, of uh, Leah Bartlett. That the referee has looked at. Yeah, I couldn't see it on this side, but she said not be binding at all. Never mind that a low bind. So, you know, right on the side of the referee, that's a little bit naive. Juggled, but retained by Chloe Rowley. Very dangerous in open play. Important tackle that from Davian Parsons. Mary MacDonald to Emma Wasso. 42nd cap today. <laughs> and the discipline is lacking for Scotland. Another penalty conceded. Yeah. Tina Maloney back in there again. I'd love to see if she just came in through or whether she came in from the side. But she gets herself in such a low body position, low centre of gravity. Good tackle here. Please, please. Yeah. But there's no rough form that, at that point. Well, they might not have Claire Malloy, but that was Claire Malloy esque from Cleon Maloney. Yeah, as I said, she's been doing it trick since the start of the game. She's getting in over the ball. If she's not turning it over, she's slowing down the Scottish ball. She's in a really low body position, supporting her own weight. I'll then go with the shortened line out. Yeah. Ethan McDermott. And now this is up. Dragging down, I think, Sarah Bonner. She definitely did jump across the line out. Udell McMahon. Rips! Pops up possession. The tackle was from Helen Nelson. Rachel McLaughlin. 
Hannah Smith, good offload, she's got her away to Megan Gaffney. Very tight to that far touchline. McDonald again, just her second cap today. No Murray Grieve, no Jenny Maxwell after that very unfortunate injury in Spain last month. Nelson comes out the back, the pass was towards Bartlett. Advantage Picked on by Hannah course. Smith. And with the Irish advantage, no, Ellen Murphy kicks away. Plus. Yeah, that's just Scotland over, trying to force it. You know, that was never on. Time off. Well, Kleena Maloney injured and uh, Hannah Smith as yes. well. On their defensive breakdown, we feel they're off their feet when they're going for it. Just want to be aware of. Yeah. So when they're going for the ball, yes, in defend, yes, we feel they're off their feet. Okay, for me it is good. Okay. Because yeah, Kleena just seems to get a knee in the head there when she's she she trying feet. to go down on the yeah. ball. After. Okay. So hands on initially, then yeah. off her feet. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Thank yeah. you. And Smith, I don't know whether it was her knee that was injured from being in Maloney's head. And as we were watching that, it was the voice of Rachel Malcolm, the Scotland captain, who was talking to the referee, feeling that Ireland are being a little nefarious in terms of the breakdown. Well, I think she had something to say. Um, she was right in saying it on the previous rook on the far side. It seemed a bit free for all for the Irish players. But look, if the ref's not going to sort it, and it was evident in the men's game yesterday, it's up to the players to sort it. That goes from the player taking the ball into contact, working hard, and then the support players coming in, cleaning out. Yeah, you play the referee as well. Let's look back at the Ireland tries and Cleena Maloney. Rampaging run. Yeah. I Down that far wing, wing for the first. Yeah. And that would be added to by Sinine Upu. Look, the basics of Ireland, I, I know the panel spoke about it before the game. Um, they seem a lot better, their patch pass, their go forward ball and their rooking. Well, Cleena Maloney is making the long walk away to our right-hand side to the dressing rooms. And it was a collision to the head, so a HIA needed. And it does mean a first a Six Nations appearance and just a second Irish cap after a debut back in November. Off the bench against Wales for Victoria Devanovic Omani. Diamond. Canadian born. Green. No, Soaring into not, pros not, with uh, Leinster. Yes. And a very exciting talent. Yeah, I haven't seen an awful lot of her play. Obviously, we saw her coming on against Wales in the November International at a little bit of club level. But she's spoken highly of by the girls in Old Belvedere about, I suppose, her power and dynamism. Pretty similar, I suppose, to Kleena Maloney as well. Crouch! And she's got some pedigree as well. Her grandfather played for Munster. Set! And Dane gets it in. Scotland get the shove on. That's a huge scrum from Scotland. And Jay Conkle gets her hands in it. It's turnover ball. And now they go. Helen Nelson floats it out. Oh, was it too high for Megan Gaffney, who was reaching forward? What a chance for Scotland to go there on the back of a massive scrum. Huge scrum. And that's certainly a psychological blow to Victoria. She comes on for her first kind of involvement in the game that they get one against the head and drive over. Again, though, Scotland, they were on go-forward ball and just forcing it out to the wing. I know the space was out there, but the wind took it up. Gaffney probably should have still caught it, but took it up above her head. We've seen them look to go wide when possible, Scotland, but the biggest joy they've had in the game so far has been the mall, and that scrum just a few moments ago as well. Outside, outside! Kick secured by Ellen Murphy. Wasted opportunity for Scotland. Catherine Danes, clearing kick, picked up by Chloe Rowley. Beats the first tackle. Vantage tackler. McDonald looking to dig it out. Another advantage coming Scotland's way. Conco. And now they get moving. Sarah Bonner. Lovely ball on the inside. Skeldon was right on her shoulder. McLaughlin. Another carry for Conco. Release Green! Ireland slowing it down. Here's Nelson. Yes. Wassel. Oh, big hit by Seninupu right up in the face of Lisa Thompson. Here goes Hannah Smith. Taken to ground by Nicola Friday. Please stay. Rachel Malcolm. Pass behind Conco. McDermott hanging on, waiting for that support to arrive. McDonald. Lisa Thompson kicks through. Not back for another Scottish penalty. 
yeah, again, they weren't getting much ground on that. Um, Scotland play a nice double line attack, and it looks good that the ball is going hung by the back, but they really got to penetrate the line, whether that's in close with the flat line runner or if they're going out the back, then they have a strike line off it. Attention required yes, this must. time for Kira Griffin. Yeah, you just see the Irish player making no effort at all to get away from that. Yes, they may be held in, but you've got to make an effort. Here's the huge scrum working as an eight, all driving through, and Jay Cocker picks off the back and looks to move it. I think she should have caught that ball. You know, yeah, a bit high, but it's still there. That's Jenny Murphy, who we uh, saw return to fitness, long injury layoff, came back in the Interpros, but not in the squad at the moment. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised that obviously she got a bit of time in the Interpros, she played a lot of club rugby, uh, played the Barbarians Diamond. game, got player of the match in 60 minutes, she's on. She's that really abrasive, hard-carrying centre that gives you gain line every time. And I know she probably hasn't been at full fitness, um, whether she's going to be looked at as the year no, goes no, on for the qualifiers yes. or not, it's hard to know. But all she can it's do is put her head down, continue playing club rugby and just put her best foot forward. Now Lisa Thompson. And it will be the line out to come just outside the Irish 22. Green on the line. Thank you. My ball again. Blue. Full man. Full man. Diana Skeldon, 38th cap for the Scottish hooker today. Goes to the front. It's untidy ball though. Conkle does well for her side to rescue it and then drive forward. Green release. Then then Jungang in a bad position here. Doing her best to tell the referee she's trying to get out of there. Little dink over the top, all on the bounce here, it's awkward. No advantage. And the penalty count continuing to tot up here. Tackle Green! Tackle Green not winning. Yeah, you could hear Njunga saying she's out, she's yeah. out, she's yeah. trying to get out, but it has to be quicker, you know. Well, you got to tackle. Ah, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. She was there yeah. for quite a yeah. while. Yeah, look, it's tackle and try and move away. Yeah, Scotland are probably playing clever, trying to hold her in as well, but that's your responsibility as tacklers, get away from there. She could have moved there and she didn't. Yes, blue. So blue the Scottish yeah. players are trying to pull her out and she's not making a big enough effort. Yeah, Mary MacDonald might be inexperienced, but by pulling her in that direction, she's not allowing her to get out the other way. Clever piece of work by the Scotland scrum half. And again, another great attacking opportunity goes to waste as they fail to secure possession. And that'll be a source of frustration. They've got themselves, the longer the half has gone on, into good attacking positions, but not able to get that ball. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah just to overthrow please. there again. The lift wasn't at full extension, so that's very tough on the hooker. You know, they're putting it where they expect the jumper to be, but there was no Irish contest, so you could lower it a little bit. And they've lost another one, stolen by Ethan McDermott. Aoife Doyle. Well, they have grown into this game, Scotland, but they've got to start taking their chances. Dane. Keeps that ball moving again. Ellen Murphy. Claffy. Wrapped up in midfield. Nairupu. He's very confident to go out one-on-one -on -one to Baby and Parsons against Rona Lloyd. It would be quite a tussle if we saw both of them in full flow. Ellen Murphy, flat ball this time for Griffin. And nowhere for Kira Griffin to go there. Emma Wassel, Jay Conkle waiting for her. Back foot ball for Ireland. No, Helen Murphy no. puts her boot to it. And that's a really good looking kick. Rona Lloyd looking around to see what her options are here. Carries it back into the 22. Slaloming in field and still going. What a run from Rona Lloyd. If she can break that tackle, she's away. She can't though. Sending Neupu to the rescue for Ireland. Very quick Rona Lloyd, elusive runner. 
Will that she found that gap. Off it! Off it! Skeldon. Mary Forsythe was on her shoulder, takes it up herself, Skeldon. Six minutes remaining in this first half. Scotland caught cold early. It's certainly warming to their task now, Neutu. No, not play on. They're in danger of it being a no arms tackle. I don't think they can turn this over. Conkle sees it though. And Jungang looking to drive over. The advice is to kick it. Nelson does exactly that. They're taken in by the well positioned Lauren Delaney. Breaks the first tackle. Gets the ball away. All great hands from Jungang to take that pass from Catherine Dane. Had Parsons on her outside. Brilliant pick up from Senenupu. Ireland inside the Scotland 22. Dabanovic Omani. Dane wants it quickly. Goes to her right. Lindsay Peach. Anna Kaper straightens it up. Pete again. Two on her outside. Lindsay Peach. Can't get away from that tackle. Aoife Doyle moves it forward. Almost a third for Ireland. But Scotland hold out and grateful for that forward touch. Yeah, that came from Scotland's poor kick. Thompson just doesn't look, Nelson, sorry, doesn't look the most natural in kick. She swings her leg around as opposed to straight on. And but she's putting herself under pressure with Ireland coming up defensively on her. And um, as I said then, the kick, the chase wasn't good enough that made gave Lauren Delaney space to, to break through. Well, some great hands earlier. Pretty. All started by Lauren Delaney getting past that first tackle. <laughs> Catherine Dane up. moved it on. Linda and Jungang. Oh, okay, well, she took that one over her shoulder. And then the pick up from Seneniupu. Chloe Raleigh not for the first time today with a big tackle for Scotland. Yeah, like there's two players on the outside there. It's just literally Let's drawn go. past. Please, please, no push early, OK? We're well, hearing uh, HIA is permanent, so we won't see the return of Fiona Maloney. And while she was on, she made a big impact. Yeah, right from the start of the first line out, she was up hard. She was really busy at the breakdown and she finished really well for a try. And a year out in injury to come back and then have to go off after 30 minutes with a HIA. Well, a big three and a half minutes or so into half time now. Scrum is wheeled, Conkle picks it up and is met straight away by Edel McMahon. Second, move away, move away! I think Conkle wisely taking that ball herself because yeah, the scrum half would have been under real pressure. Get out. Number four. Yeah, I think that's, not rolling away. that's far too many penalties at the breakdown and really similar things. Irish players not rolling away. I think the yeah, Scottish should be really annoyed if the ref doesn't go to a card soon enough. I know it's not maybe in the scoring zone, but they're slowing down every ball that that Scotland are trying to move and it limits their options then. Well, they have had a griper to Scotland yeah. with the yeah, Rally yeah, yeah, yeah. our French referee. Five, five, five. Five. And this line-out has proven really problematic for Scotland. Can they secure this one? Russell the target, and again it's just panned by the lock. Conkle, another carry for the Harlequins, number eight. Mary MacDonald. And it's not a ball that Chloe Rolly was looking forward to receiving with Seneniupu. A yard away in closing. Sarah Bonner. MacDonald and Conkle will go again. Breaks the tackle of McMahon this time. One. Another Scotland penalty. Lindsay Peach pinned again. Captain. And now Kira Griffin will be called Cynical. across. Yeah. Please, you speak to number one. Thank you. Yes. What was that for? Sir? Yeah. What was it for? Yes, number one, top of the ball. Okay, thank you. 
Good contact that time from Lisa Thompson. A minute and a half for Scotland to mount an attack here to get themselves on the scoreboard. Blue here, please. Skeldon judges that one beautifully. Taken by Rachel Malcolm as they mix it up that time. Scotland crash ball up the middle. Anna Capeless feeling that she didn't knock it on, and the referee is content that she didn't. Where is the ball? Big hit from Anna Capeless. Knock on you. Yeah, I thought Scholar were kind of lucky in the line and it looked to be on the outside hand of, of the catcher, but he got away with it. But then a huge de defensive hit from Anna Capeless. Yeah, please. I know we've seen Scotland attacking well off the mall twice, but it's just not consistent enough. Their line out isn't consistent enough that it's given them a good platform to attack off. Crouch! Let's go, Bye! What's the option for Ireland here? Almost on the half time whistle. Scotland get the big shove on again. Advantage. Green. Another massive Green. effort from the Scotland pack. Yes, yes, yes. Conco. Well, they are obliterating that Ireland scrum. McDonald, Nelson. Yes. So Doyle came up quickly off that line. Carried by Gaffney. Scotland trying to get her to ground. Gaffney scrambles on the other yard or two. McDonald, Murray Forsyth. Tight head, gains Willis a yard or two. McDonald sees the gap. Skeldon. Here's Malcolm. The captain into contact. Ireland not overly committing. Hannah Smith away from Neupu. Well, this would be a massive fill-up of a score if they could get one. To heading to the dressing rooms with here, Scotland. Conkel with support on her shoulder. Nelson, short flat ball for Sarah Bonner. Stand back. Slow ball. Nelson. Oh, sees a gap. Friday can't hold her either. Advantage. No, 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 back, please. Advantage, Scotland coming. Attacker, 16. The forwards keep it tight. Another pick by Bonner. Travelling fans exhorting everything out of their team here. Lana Skeldon. Inside the five metres. Conkle takes charge. McDonald. Now they look for some with Lisa Thompson is over. It is a score that Scotland desperately needed went through the phases and it all came from that scrum once again when Ireland were blown off the ball and Scotland this time do get the reward. What a scrum. Their defensive scrum the last two have just been outstanding, turning over against the head and then just moving the ball and really clever picking and going with a, with a latcher on that is just driving them through the contract that is getting them quicker ball. And I thought they were going to keep it in the forwards there, but Jay Conkel moved it out and she trusts her backs to make the line. Don't know whether Hannah Smith ran a line to kind of block an Irish defender, but referee didn't call it or see it. Or maybe they are checking it. Yeah, TMO obviously came in at something. Well, what will the outcome be here? No, it seems they're going ahead, so try Scotland. Yeah, they're happy. Lisa yes. Thompson. The winners offside. The time to run. Yes. Oh, every time. Beautiful angle. I have advantage. Yes. Hit the yes. line. Just, just how many times? Though? Ireland yeah. couldn't suffer it's from close range. Her sixth try for Scotland. Offside. Yeah. It's An clear absolutely for me. vital how many one. Would you say? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> how many? Combia. Ah. Uh, uh, penalties. Okay. Uh, Eric. <laughs> Helen Nelson makes no mistake from virtually right in front. What a massive score that is for Scotland, and that might well change the halftime team talks. Talk about timely. Lisa Thompson driving over. Scotland have got themselves on the board and looking at just a six-point deficit.
as the teams head to the dressing rooms at Energy Park in Donnybrook. It is Ireland 13, Scotland 7.
Bridge. Ducker.
Yeah, it's going to be an intriguing second half, this one. Ireland would take that first 20 minutes all over again. Scotland would take the second 20 minutes. But that psychological <laughs> advantage, that blow Scotland struck in the last play of that first half with the try from Lisa Thompson puts them right in this game. And in the context of the overall Six Nations for these two nations, well, this is a massive 40 minutes ahead now. Dorothy Wall is on for Ireland at half-time. The 19-year-old from Feathered. And what a way to introduce yourself. Massive hit straight up from the kickoff. <laughs> Mary McDonald. <laughs> Nelson puts boot to ball right down through the middle. Ellen Murphy there with Lauren Delaney. And Delaney, the injection of pace, and she's through. Lauren Delaney looking for options. Eyed up by her opposite number, Chloe Raleigh, who had to get her to ground there. Lauren Delaney, you might remember, scored that brilliant try at Twickenham, November 2018. Almost had a huge moment right at the start of the second half for Ireland. Michelle Claffey, good hands from Lindsay Pete, straightens it up. Hands off, Lana Skeldon. Pete's still going, here's Aoife Doyle. Didn't want to go on the outside and risk being bundled into touch by Megan Gaffney. Linda and Jun Gang. Legs still pumping, still going. The Ireland tight head, Catherine Dane. Ellen Murphy, Sinenupu. Neupu saw a gap of her own. Scotland shut that door just in time. Devanovic Omani looking to show what she can do in terms of a carry. Kira Griffin, the one who has made way, it's an injury enforced. Absence from this second half for the Ireland captain. Here's Claffy. His lovely dancing feet. Lindsay Pete again. Happy to take on all comers. Taken to ground by Rachel Malcolm. In June gang. Dane on quick ball. Ellen Murphy and Claffy. A little inside step once more. Supported by Neupu. Dane, and they continue to look left. Ellen Murphy looks suspiciously forward. And that confirmed by a match official. Yeah, poorest defence there from Scotland. Uh, first of all, Delaney spotting is lack of integrity in that Scottish defensive line. But also, they're not coming up very hard off the line, which has given Ireland lots of time on the ball to make the decision whether that's to step back inside or to move the ball. They have a lot of time on the ball. And also, Scottish defence are very slow to fold open. So there is overlaps on the outside flanks for the Irish team. Ten minutes to go in France. England leading France by 19 points to 10 now. We'll bring you the full time from that one as soon as we get it. Ireland having to deal with the loss of their captain, Kira Griffin, a big influence on this team, but the arrival of the very exciting 19-year-old Dorothy Wall. And for her international debut. McDonald's. No, three! Three, stop! 
clearing kick watched all the way by Bevin Parsons Lauren Delaney looking to go again some tidy ball this for Catherine Dane she's done well with it though Anna Capeless keeps it in there with support penalty Scotland though number two He's first. Cam. Yeah, Lana Skeldon in over the ball. Anna Cleese went on her own there. Irish support was slow and Skeldon got in and low. Great turnover. Yeah, she wasn't given very many options this? there. It was a bit of a hot potato from Dane. Yeah, yeah. Nicola Go. Friday coming in a little bit high, but Skeldon was already there. It's very difficult to move someone in that position. Great body position from Lana Skeldon on her feet. Crouched over the ball, hands on it. Winning the penalty for her team. Yeah, it's great to see young players like Dorothy Wall coming through, having played the whole way up. You know, they come through, they're more skillful, they're athletic at an age when most of us only started playing rugby, so it is brilliant to see those players coming through now. Once again, Errant with the kick, Scotland, as they don't find touch. And the chance to work off an attacking penalty is gone. Dane. Murphy. A little show and dart from Michelle Claffey. Scotland seem well aware, though, of uh, her threat. Both Lisa Thompson and Hannah Smith have been big in defence and prominent in attack as well when Scotland have had it. Wall, big carry. And she makes it just shy of halfway. Dane and Murphy. Picked off her laces by Aoife Doyle and unceremoniously bundled into touch by Jay Conco. I think if there's one player in the Scotland team you don't want coming at you in that position, it's Jade Conco. Yeah, look, I thought yes. Jade was quiet enough for the first 20 minutes of the game, but she's really come into it both in attack and defence. And, you know, she's training as a full time professional. She's a physically imposing player. And, uh, you know, Gaffney acted as a bit of a speed bump and then Conco came in and, and finished the job off. She's at Harlequins, Jade Conkle, where she's working under Karen Finlay, who was once her Scotland coach. Scotland coach, Scotland player, played against her a few times, and I, was, I suppose that was at the time when Scotland were dom a dominant, um, certainly more dominant than Ireland were back in the day. So, yeah, look, they seem to have a... Releasing before they turn. Ah, yeah. Is it okay? Yes, yes, for me. Yes, it's good for me. Yes, okay. you release. Yeah, yes. Thank you. A new voice for the referee is Seneniupu has taken over that role in the captaincy with the departure of Kira Griffin at half time. Yeah, look, she's just asking for a clear release um, at the tackle, but it goes to both sides. I think Ireland have got away with a few as well. But you know, as a former captain, you just all you can do is ask nicely, isn't it? But that's the thing you ask the referee, you don't tell them, and you try and get them on your side. There's no point in having an argument to get their back up about things, they're going to have their mindset. They're looking for the support of the referee team. Um, and, you know, they'll call it as they see it. Yes, they'll miss things, but you'll hope that it's equal across the board and it all balances out in the end. Got to talk recently in Irish circles about the best position for a captain to play in with uh, Johnny Sexton appointed. School of thought that it's always good to have someone who's either in the pack or one of the halfbacks because uh, proximity to the referee. Yeah, look, you have that. Um, but also, I think it has to be a player that all the other players will rally around and support. And it more comes down to that leadership team. You'll have players in certain positions throughout the squad that have to take a responsibility, whether that's line out, scrum. So, yeah, probably fullback isn't the best, but anywhere in and around where the referee's going to be. So, 10, you know, you're not never too far away from the ref. The scrum wheels, Ireland looked to disrupt this time, but Conkel is comfortable, has it at her feet. Oh, it's not a great ball to Mary McDonald, though. Yeah, Scotland really should have went down the blind side. They had it up left. They went the wrong way, just into the Irish back row. Strange decision from Jade Conkle, who hasn't made uh, too many strange ones today. Normally, takes the right option. Wrestle off the ball between Adele McMahon and Sarah Bonner. As they sort out a few things around the fringes of that rook. Here is Nelson, flat ball for Lisa Thompson, Aoife McDermott. And Dylan Murphy there waiting for her. Next score and this one looks vital. Can Scotland close the gap even further? Hannah Smith is away. And this is where she is so, so dangerous. Support on her shoulder from Chloe Rolly. Lana Skelvin. Conco driving straight at Njungan. 
And a capeless there in support. Nelson, who oh, it's a blind pass, picked up by Aoife Doyle. Another great attacking position for Scotland, comes to nothing. And Dorothy Wall to drive Ireland out in Jungang. Victoria Devanovic Omani driving her on a little bit extra. Dane puts boot to ball. Gaffney hasn't secured that one. And loose hands on a few occasions from the Scotland winger today. Aoife Doyle, I think, is it down injured? She needs attention. On we go. Mary MacDonald takes a second to survey her options. Conco. Hannah Smith looking for that line break again. Two tries in Spain last month. One of them a breakaway. Length of the pitch effort. Rachel Malcolm has found a gap. Support arriving now, Rona Lloyd, lined up by Baby Parsons. Well, this game is suddenly wide, wide open. Nelson for Conco. Fearsome sight when she attacks that ball. No, no, back, please. Aoife Doyle back on her feet. Shifted on by Rachel McLaughlin. Another blind pass thrown. Yeah, Scotland just really needs to calm down when they're in control of the ball like that. They are finding gaps. <laughs> yeah. They are finding gaps. There was a huge gap there between Friday and Devanovic Omani. Great support by Lloyd and again Malcolm on the outside, brilliant support. But then they just try to force it. They really try to get into that flanks when it's not on. That's even forcing it there. I know it gets to Skeldon, but and this was never on from Raleigh. Helter Skelter a few minutes. Remains 13-7. That's the injury to Aoife Doyle. Maybe just a, a blow to the ribs there. And she got up quickly to make the tackle on Gaffney. Yeah, I kind of think if the game gets loose like this, it'll suit Scotland better than the Irish team. I think Ireland should probably look. They probably only have one back in the backfield. There is space there. They should look target maybe Gaffney's wing she looks a bit vulnerable in defensive positions well, the third game taking place today that we haven't updated you on yet it's uh, Wales against Italy 10-5 Wales that one kicked off at uh, same time as this one here <laughs> Italy outstanding last year even go back to the way they finished the 2018 Six Nations I think won their last couple there took that into last year second place finish an outstanding campaign for them yeah, Italy really remind me of the Irish squad back in 2012, 2013. They were a really good core group of players, really good management structure, but unfortunately there's not a lot going on outside the national team. Um, they've also lost their captain and fullback for the season, Furland, and she's a huge loss for them. And I think that they'll suffer from, from things like that. You can't, they just don't have the depth to be able to get players of that quality back into the team. And a shoulder injury for Manuela Furland. Looks like she'll miss the entire campaign. Now, Scotland back. Uh, will there be more line out issues in the second half? We wonder. Or have they remedied that at the interval? Sarah Bonner, McDermott almost got to it again for Ireland. That's a knock on off the fingers, I think, of McDermott. Mary McDonald trying to clean out the Irish player, Anna Capus. Bartlett takes it into contact. Here is Nelson and the dangerous Thompson. Dorothy Wall in with another hit. What an impact she's made since her half-time arrival. And what the job are for knock on? Stay, please. Good first up hit from Devanovic Omani. Nelson. Wrapped up by Neupu. Conco. Strong Irish midfield defence again, led that time by Michelle Claffey. Here's Bonner. Prompting and probing Scotland, looking for that gap. Skeldon. Fends off McDermott. Ireland slowing it down again. And Scotland not getting that ball out of there, not releasing. 
And it's Anna Capus, I think, who was in there doing the dirty work for Ireland again. Yeah, it's clearly an area that they've worked on in the off-season is that breakdown area and getting low on their body over the ball. Skeldon goes in on her own. Omani makes a tackle and well in there. By, she's supporting her whole body weight. I don't know. She is on her, on her legs. But I don't know whether she's supporting her own body weight. But look, the referee is giving it and that's what you go with. Yeah. Yes, playing at eight today, Anna Capus, which is an interesting one to watch. But uh, had a little chat with her before the game. Such a positive character. We saw her during the anthem as well. And she's uh, one of those heart and soul people. Yeah, like last she's season was tough like for her. She was on, she was yeah. off. Um, she, again, she's gone to Quinns yeah, from we, Richmond, we looking to get more game, game time at a yes. higher quality yeah, and training yeah. time. Yeah. I don't know if Ada's her most natural position. I just don't think she's that ball playing eight that Ireland probably need going forward and to develop. But you know, she'll give 100%. She, six is probably her better position in my eyes. Um, but I think they're quite limited in ball playing eights. Yes. Well, you look at, yeah. even over the last few years, Actually, the last handful eight? of years, Number the Irish ten? pack has yeah. lost the likes of Paula Fitzpatrick and Sophie Spence and Maz Riley. Big characters coming out of that team, big characters coming out of that dressing room as well. Yeah, look, no, and this no, team has to find their own identity and, yes. and what's, what works for them. And, and you get new characters every time. Every time someone comes to the squad, they add something new, and it's just about getting that right balance. And Helen Nelson is heading for a HIA. And it's Sarah Law coming on. Sarah Law, who's had her fair share of injury issues. I know you know her well. 40 plus caps. Can she get to the pitch of this one quickly? Yeah, I had the pleasure of playing with Sarah when she was, must have been only 16 or 17 in Kinsale Sevens. And she's been unfortunate with injury this season. Um, but she can play nine or ten. Nine is probably her better position. I've seen her sister Rachel called into the squad as well by Philip Doyle the last week or so when they've had those injuries at half-back. OK, Puss was looking to take it right off the shoulder of Lindsay Knock Pete. Knock on. Well, that's a matter of inches between that working and not working. Scrum. No, no. It's a blue to back. Yes, no, no. Ooh, yeah. Okay, it was the line she ran. Lindsay probably thought she was on a bit of a more outside line. Anna ran on a straight hard line and the ball floated to her hands. She should have she should have classed it. Now back to an Irish scrum. Linda, you need to go. Might need to get this in and out quickly. Collapsing on this near side. That's uh, Linda and Jung Gang and Mary, or uh, Leah Bartlett. Yeah, it looked like Njunga's elbow was yes. down towards the ground, dragging please. Bartlett down. Stay high, please. Okay. And the referee is going to watch the uh, reset scrum from this side. Now Ireland with Lauren Delaney and Aoife Doyle over on this near side. Four strung out to the left, Capus takes it off the back of the scrum as it was just beginning to go backwards. Dane, flat for Lindsay Pete. Pressure about to come on Ellen Murphy here. Catherine Dane maybe wisely. Sticks one up in the air and asks Chloe Rolly to try and defend that. Rolly secures it for Scotland. Lisa Thompson in at scrum half. Conco has gone through an absolute mountain of work. McDonald's, Law, Kathy up to try and put in a first up hit. With a grubber through from Law. Hunted down by Hannah Smith. Not on green, advantage blue. Not on. I'll just see with the arrival of Sarah Law, just trying something a little bit different there. Put that Irish defence guessing. Emma Wasso. Advantage for knock on. McDonald's.
Ball at the back for Thompson. Oh, they've worked this well. Megan Gaffney, first chance to go in open play. Chloe Rowley on her shoulder, taken down by Aoife Doyle. Gaffney quickly there in support to protect that ball for Scotland. Law, half a gap, lovely offload. Sarah Bonner needs support now. Presents that ball well. Thompson, oh, she's got the kick wrong. Furious with herself there. That was never an option for players outside who didn't know it. They weren't expecting, they weren't chasing up on it. They had Ireland on the back foot, back foot. They just should have controlled it and went through the phases they again. Must. Three. Just see there how exciting the likes of Raleigh is when she, she gets her hands on the ball in a little bit of space. Huge cheer for Lyndon Jungang as she departs and the arrival of Leah Lyons as well. And the kick. Leah Lyons, a second year now, isn't it, at Harlequins? She's had her injury issues though. Yeah, she had her injury, then she struggled with a, form, a bit of form coming back. Uh, couldn't make the first team of Harlequins, then started to make it there just before Christmas. So hasn't had a huge amount of game time at the highest level, but she is a quality, skillful player. 2017, 18, 19, big showings in the Six Nations from Leah Lyons. Her try against Scotland in Scotland last year meant uh, she completed the full sweep of scoring against every nation in her Six Nations career. I know the wind is into Ireland's face, but I find it's a very strange call calling for a scrum when you've been under a huge amount of pressure in the scrum and in your own 22. Maybe it's the introduction of Leah and they're hoping that she's going to make that difference. Versatile anywhere across that front row, Leah Lyons. At the moment, it's uh, Lindsay P, 39 years of age now, the only remaining member of the front row that started the game. A bit more solid that time, but awkward for Anna Capelis, and Mary McDonnell has pounced on her. Lindsay P can see it, Leah Lyons can see it. Leah Lyons picks in with Dorothy Wall right on her hip. Looking to drive Ireland out of their 22. High and hanging from Dane. Batted back by Ellen Murphy off the knee of Nicola Friday. All a bit frantic. Here's Hannah Smith. Put to ground by a combination of Claffey and Wall. Bonner. He's had the ball in hand on plenty of occasions today. Mary MacDonald. Mark, please! Still, as you were at half time, Ireland 13, Scotland 7. Good offload off her back by Hannah Smith. Chloe Rolly trying to get it away to Megan Gaffney. Knocked on, Ireland advantage. Capeless, lovely little dummy, but she's a little bit isolated here. Sarah Law trying to turn that ball over. Conquer, big hit again, driving the Ireland player in possession back. Devanovic Omani, still scrambling. Dane for Lyons. Capeless, oh, lovely hands. Here goes Edel McMahon. Drives in field, support there. Dane. He takes it out of the hands of Dorothy Wall. Ireland on halfway. Ellen Murphy, whose passing has been crisp and accurate today. Nayupu back on the inside for Ethan McDermott. Dane draws the first defender. Murphy taken to ground by Hannah Smith. And Scotland working hard, and they've won themselves the penalty. Just as I about to say, I thought Not Ireland were really composed, working their way out of the 22, when the wind is clearly in their face. Um, and then they get themselves into difficulty there, not just not clearing out the rook. That's right. Kira Griffin can only look on now. We hope that those out there can get the job done, can see this job through, and get Ireland off to a winning start. Yeah, and hope her injury isn't too bad. Um, you know, again, you, you Ireland doesn't really have that depth to replace someone of Kira's quality. This is really good by Anna, great offload in the contact Nine. and great line by Idel McMahon. And the changes Seven. continue to come. Seven. 
And it's time for uh, one live wire scrum half to replace another. And Nicole Cronin on for Catherine Dane. Change on the Scotland side sees the arrival of Siobhan Cattigan as well into that Scottish back row. Yeah, again, Nicole Cronin hasn't played an awful lot of rugby. She's been out with injury. I thought Catherine Dane had a fine 55 minutes. Her distribution of the ball was sharp, it was quick. You know, probably didn't see a lot of her sniping and things like that that you probably see from Nicole, but I thought her service was really, really good to the Irish back line and controlled the pack quite well. Good take of the front from Emma Wasso. Have they sorted out that line out Scotland? Lisa Thompson, Dorothy Wall in with another big hit. We talk about youngsters as players for the future. Dorothy Wall has shown enough here to suggest she's uh, very much a player for the here and now. Yeah, look, obviously growing up playing with Feather, then moving up through the ranks and then being with the Irish Sevens and getting to train day in, day out, improving your skills. Ireland have turned it over, Nicole Cronin gets on it. But Scotland have turned it over again. Oh, and a gap found by Chloe Rowley. Oh, brilliant run, could she go all the way here? Scored here in Scotland's win two years ago. Rachel Malcolm, risky ball. Nitha Doyle almost had the intercept. Knock on green, scramble. Well, they are taking some risks with their passing Scotland. High risk, high reward, I guess. Yeah, look, this is a brilliant break for Raleigh. She probably had the option to step back on the outside, on the other direction. She might not have been caught. But then Scotland have numbers. They just have to hold a little bit of dip, big depth, maybe throw a decoy runner in. And they had numbers out here on the wing. One. Well, that confirms the departure of the front row. Big 56 minutes from Lindsay Peet as she's replaced by Laura Feely. Yeah, both Peet and Njunga, uh, big carriers of the ball in the first half. They both had 11 carries each, but they also both gave away three penalties each, which, you know, at this level you can't afford to be doing. Oui. Wait. That stage of the game where the replacements are arriving and where the replacements role will be key. Kina Maloney, Kira Griffin. We we'll hope the uh, assessments and the injuries are nothing that will keep them out long term. Wales to come here in a week's time, then it's the break, yeah, two weeks ready? afterwards, off to England, Italy at home, and they will finish Ireland in France. Scotland next with England to come at home. They have Italy away, France at home, and end away to Wales. Had a few close ones at Wales in uh, recent years, Scotland. Yeah, and Italy are leading that game now, 12-10 against Wales. It'll be a close one, I'd say, when it comes to the end. Crouch! We understand England have won in France, 19 points to 13. Massive that for Simon Middleton's team. Jay Conco, who hasn't taken a backward step in this one, the Scotland number eight. Sarah Law for Mary Forsyth. One converted try, and Scotland would find themselves in front. Mary MacDonald looking for a gap around the fringes. Look to Conkel again. Short flat pass for a captain no, Malcolm. Forward pass. Penalty. Now that one looks suspiciously forward, but we'll go back for the one before that. It's a Scotland penalty. Yeah, it was a really good line by Malcolm. And sometimes you kind of get away with those depending on where the referee is standing, but the referee was right on the mark. And these are nervy moments now for Ireland as they defend their six point lead. Scotland. Sensing perhaps there's a score in this uh, period of the game for them. Time off. And a hand from uh, Line. Jade Conkel. Yeah, look, that's the assistant referee on this side. That's One. called the referee is on the other side. Yes. Yes. Well, she got away with it. Yeah. Interesting. They're going for a short line out with Conkel standing in the scrum half position. Gap, please. Gap. Lisa Coburn coming on. Into that Scottish front row. 
Wassel at the front, it's something more ambitious, and again, Lana Skeldon was well into the pitch by the time she released that ball. And the ball paid dividends. Mary McDonald, maybe wisely leaving it to Conkle, the big ball carrier. Mary Forsythe right on her shoulder to lend assistance. Lana Skeldon picks and drives. Feely, that first line of defence for Ireland. Sarah Bonner driven further in field. Time for the right decisions, time to hold your nerve here on both sides. Skeldon carries once more. Well, they need to be careful not to concede a penalty, almost under their own posts. McDonald now puts them within it. Thompson, big hit from now to Conco. Dorothy Wall drives her back. Wall trying to protest that she is getting away from that ball. Scotland get that little pot of three together. The Alliance first to meet Skelder. Back, please, back. Going through the phase of Scotland. Can they make this pressure count? Lisa Coburn. Substitute tight head in there as well. Sarah Bonner. Really testing the resilience of this Irish defence. Feely looks to get off the line quickly. Hannah Smith looking for that post. Almost there, Scotland. Sustained pressure on the Irish line. Knock on, no advantage. It's been knocked on. Knocked on by Conkle there. Great work by Smith. He thought she almost got to the base of the post. Conkle picked and went and knocked it on with the line out of mercy. Now, Seneniopo have been called across, I think there may have been an offside. And we're in that area, that territory in the pitch where the referee you mentioned it in the first half might look towards the yellow. Let's wait and see. Please speak to your player, because we have your feet. Yes, thank you. Yeah, she's telling him to get back on side, work hard to get it back on side. But I also think, again, at the breakdown, Dorothy Wall didn't make enough effort on the far side to roll away. Again, that's slowing down Scotland's ball. Ireland are under huge amounts of pressure by Scotland. You know, they're working really well in the forwards. They're going, but they're not going on their own. Uh, Jake Conkle did go on on the last one. But prior to that, the build-up, it was really good phases. They had a latch on every time. Question there whether that 3-0 of Scotland players took Irish players out of it. But this was great work by Smith. I'm not sure who's under. Is it Nicole Cronin, maybe? Yes. Dabanovic Omani is in there. And that's how close they were. Touch it off that upright, and it's a try. And a conversion to be taken from under the post. That would have been Scotland in front. They still have the chance. Great field position here. We've, what, 15 minutes to go. And these are those minutes where games are won and lost. Captain? Yeah? No, no. no. You have penalty for you here? Kira okay. Cooney. Will be the next off the bench for Ireland. Offside, wise scrum. So Scotland have the scrum. Yeah, wise decision going for the scrum. It's been powerful, but now you have got to make it count. This is when you concentrate to your maximum. You're five meters out. You've been dominant in the scrum, and it's about all eight working together, not working, worrying about what comes afterwards. Just focus on that scrum. These are where the psychological blows are struck. If Ireland can repel Scotland here, hold them out and relieve the pressure. Could well break Scottish hearts if Scotland can score. Oh, what a closing period will be set for. Conkel has it at her feet. Use it! Can't budge the Irish scrum this time. Mary MacDonald! Flat ball for Thompson, she was almost in. Law. Bonner driven on by Emma Wassel. Law trying to orchestrate. Who she wants where, Skeldon. Right, they go. Law intercepts. It's a long way to go, but she might well get there. Gaffney trying to close on Vivian Parsons. 
She's had precious little ball to work with today, but that is exactly what she can do. The 18-year-olds, what a score. Length of the field, Scotland knocking on the door, pounding on that Irish line, couldn't get over it. One straight pass, and Bevin Parsons, the star of the future for Manny in this Ireland team, has gone from one end to the other. What a score. What a read, firstly. It's a gamble to step up, but she judged it beautifully, and no one was catching her from there. Oh, Scotland, they had it, they had numbers on the outside. Parsons read it well, she was up, but that meant there was a dog leg there. Oh, that's a killer blow for Scotland. They work so hard. They probably should have kept it in the pack when things go like that. But Parsons, there's no catching her. You see her pace. She's a fabulous runner of the ball. And she's just so exciting anytime she gets her hands on the ball. What a blow for yeah. Scotland. And for Kira Cooney, well, just showing the emotion of all Irish players, fans, management staff inside the stadium. And I was just watching as Bavian Parsons was taking congratulations down one end. There was two or three Irish players acknowledging just in a group at the other end, knowing how significant a score that is. Yeah, prior to that, it was all Scotland. They were knocking on the door. They were down here. The, the possession has turned. They were dominant in possession. And just to come away like that is a killer blow. I've seen Nicole Cronin taking over the kick and duties. Ellen Murphy looks to be going off. Ellen Murphy hobbling off down below us. Nicole Cronin, well, that one's dropped short, so well, not much more than you know, 12 minutes to go. It's an 11-point game. It could have been oh so different. Claire Kilhan has come down for her debut. But Baby Parsons, 18 Six. years of age, only turned up 18 in November, I think it was. What is but they've known new about captain? her for so long she's been the one coming through she scored a hat-trick in an underage uh, game against England a few years ago but she's been the one they've been waiting for she's hardly seen the ball in hand today what a moment for her uh, look from her first cap here she plays with such confidence she's a hard-working player she didn't get a lot of ball but she does her job any chance that she gets uh, hugely exciting and as I said earlier the quality of those players coming through and there's more of them in the ranks but out there playing in clubs it's funny I'm looking at the uh, Stats board in front of us here, and Bavin Parsons is down as meters made 60. I think 59 of them were there. It just goes to show when you get your chance. We said at the outset when we were going through the team sheet, she's a finisher. Four tries in the Interpros in two games, only played the semi final and final for Connacht. She brings the uh, books in her bag, as you said, she's a leaving cert student. She's got an awful lot in her plate this year, and that's a moment that she will never forget. And have they put Scotland to bed with that first score and only score so far in the second half? Scotland not dead yet. They've shown enough in this game to suggest it could well be a late rally in them. Conquer. Arden looked to get to her quickly in the form of the recently arrived Kira Cooney. Yes. Chloe Rolly. Yes. Looking for that gap once more. Number. Davine Parsons, who made her debut as a 16-year-old. Yeah, that's for you. That's how highly she was rated. Where, well, Eric? Played against the US. Came off the bench, I think, against England as well that year. Yeah, She's like, been with the Sevens also. Yeah, like people talk about a 16-year-old playing up international level, but she was physically ready. She was an athlete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Thank she went through all the procedures with the physios and strength and conditioners to say, yeah, look, she is physically ready for this level. And, She's never shirked anything, whether defensively or in attack, and, she, and she's proven herself and proven her worth from being a 16-year-old up okay. to today, and now 18, two years later. I'm sure they were rejoicing, maybe louder than anyone down in Ballinasloe when she got that ball in hand. Time They'd off. have known, having seen her from a young age, that uh, no one was going to catch her there. But for Scotland, we, saw, we spoke about a psychological blow with the Lisa Thompson try just before halftime. Such a positive for them. But to have that sustained period of pressure on the Irish line, to have that scrum, to be knocking on the door, and then for just one pass to be picked on, 
and all of a sudden it's an 11 point deficit from a position where they could have been in front. Yeah, it's all about momentum and, and things going your way and sometimes it comes down to the bounce of the ball but there it came down to a player making a good read and getting the intercept and uh, look, killer blow and I'm Sorry, sure Philip Doyle will be raging that they didn't put a, a score in earlier because they'd been camped down here for so long. You know, you don't get many chances within the five metre. When you do get there, you've got to make a count. And for the exhilarating moment, that was Bavian Parsons. Well, the Irish will have a massive nod to that defence as they held out and held out. Inside the last 10 minutes. Scotland needs something and they need it quickly to set up a grandstand finish. Good take in the line out. And now they look to set that ball in motion again. Lana Skeldon peering to the right hand side to see what might be on on the short side. Mary McDonald, flat ball for Thompson, she's through and has Hannah Smith on her shoulder. Ireland scrambling to get to them. Advantage Dangerous inside. Scottish centre partnership. Law, flat ball, Raleigh couldn't reach it. Here's Evie Tomkin just on the pitch. Yes, thank you. Scotland threaten again, Conkle. Wrapped up by Dabanovic Omani. Law, Thompson and Smith once more. Another tackle comes in from Senenupu. Bonner. Coburn and Wassel there to ensure possession for Scotland. Another carry for Skeldon. Mari Forsyth. Driven on by Coburn and a few others. Bonner. Trapping their way left but gaining yards each time Scotland. Conker. So hard to put down. Now they go wide, Thompson, oh, it's a dangerous pass. Neopo's on it. We're on and up too quickly. <laughs> Scotland penalty. Aoife Doyle penalised for offside. Yes, how many penalties is that? Yes, it's just... How many? For the second time, it's okay. two. Okay. And that's yes. interesting from Lisa Thompson, just asking. I think they're trying to pressurise for a card here. How many penalties, she asks, of the French referee have Ireland conceded in their 22? Interestingly, Green. they go for a line-out. Passing up the scrum option this time. That Ireland scrum has solidified in this second half. Skeldon has to be accurate here. Into the soaring hands of Sarah Bonner. Good sack, no, good sack. Ireland sack the line out taker cleanly. And legally in the eyes of the referee. McDonald's. Here is Law and Thompson. Again, that midfield defence standing strong for Ireland. And back we go once more. 18. And Leah Lines is going to get carded. Yes. And that is the end of the day for Leah Lines. And just you wonder about asking of the referee, Lisa Thompson did, and it was in the referee's mind. And Leah Lines, the one who's been punished. Yeah, look, I think Ireland were lucky to keep all 15 on the pitch this long. Uh, you know, every time they've been under pressure, they've given away silly penalties in this in this area, and it's slowing down Scotland ball. Here she is. This is a substitution because it's a pro. Yeah. Yes. Let's see what's wrong with that, to be honest with you. I actually would have went for the sack in the line, and I didn't think it was yeah, legal. I thought they had the all started. You don't have a support? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, someone was going to pay the penalty, literally, and it's uh, Leah Lyons, the one who's been picked up by the referee. Yeah, unless she didn't come from the back foot, from that angle she looked all right. So obviously you have to bring Njunga back on and take one of the back rows off, or a winger off. Seven. 
So it's Scotland going for the scrum. Ireland have to have uh, that front row. Idel McMahon, the one sacrificed. Seconds continue to tick away, and that's a positive from an Irish point of view. And back with the scrum, there's an early shove there. Conker controls it, and Danger is squirting out the back there. Nicole Cronin putting pressure on the Scotland number eight. They are only inches off that Irish line. Pick and drive, this one repelled. And Jungang straight back into the white heat of battle. McDonald skeleton. And this is heroic Irish defence, Conkel. And they've held her up short, Ireland. Trying to go up and over that time, Jade Conkel. And a chance here for Russell, she's over. This one is not over yet. Emma Russell. Ireland's resistance finally cracks. And we've watched uh, inside the last five minutes. 18-12, conversion to come. And Ireland down to 14. Yeah, certainly deserving in that try. Going for the scrum. Ireland down to seven. Really powerful. I thought Jake probably should have controlled it at the back of the scrum a little bit better. But they kept it in the forwards, which has been working well for them. They picked and went, picked and went. Then they moved it back out. And Wassel powers over outside. Skelton now kicking. Unusual to see a hooker kicking, but... She's done it many times in the past, and with Nelson gone off, it's either going to be herself or Law. Nine conversions, one penalty in her Six Nations history. It's a very tight angle. That is a miraculous kick from Lana Skeldon. And it brings the deficit, what, to 18-14, a four-point game. Scotland need one more try. And that conversion might be massive when the dust settles here. And what a conversion. It doesn't matter what number's on your back. If you're the most skillful person to do it, then you step up and you take it. And she did it with full confidence. Well, she the blow is that Jade Conkle has succumbed to injury after a massive game from the Scotland number eight. Can Ireland see it through? Claire Kilhan on her debut restarts the game. Well, we expected this to be a close run affair today. It's going right to the wire. Molly Wright, the New Zealand-born hooker, is on. Skeldon is also on the pitch. And the bounce didn't quite work out for Scotland. And for Evie Tonkin. Decision-making accuracy. Experienced players on both sides with a huge Time role to play off. now in the last two and a half minutes. Please, let's go. Green, green. We'll be getting Ready? Fiona's uh, player of the match in a minute. There's some thinking to do there. Time on. Blue. And maybe there's still someone out there to come up with a big last play. Win that honour and win the game. Overthrown the lineup. Skeldy. Mary McDonald. Here's Cadigan. Scribed by Kira Cooney. Law. Thompson takes the hit up again. Voracious appetite for work. Here's Wassel, who's try has got them right back in this game. McDonald. Mary Forsyth. Handling has to be secure for Scotland now. Home side doing their utmost to get Ireland over the line. Oh, big floated pass. The bounce holds up for Evie Tonkin. Stroke of luck for Scotland there. McDonald's worked on by Molly Wright and by Law and for sight. Big hit from Selene Upu. But it's played as you see it rugby now. 
And that's a knock-on from Scotland. That might well see Ireland through. Scrum win. Well, Fiona, we finally get a break and play this frantic second half. Who are you going to opt to for your player of the match? Yeah, look, it's a tough one. Um, I think Conkle really came into it in the second half for Scotland and put them on the front foot. In the Irish team, Tina Maloney was outstanding for the 30 minutes she was on, on the pitch. Dane gave really good quality ball. But for me, it was number seven, Ireland's number seven, Edel McMahon. I think she had 20-odd tackles in the game. She was involved in everything positive. Her work rate was phenomenal. Uh, so the player of the match is Edel McMahon. Edel McMahon gets the nod from Fiona Coughlin, wearing that number seven jersey, and so much uh, expectation, I guess, comes with that, with no Claire Malloy this year. Well, yeah. Two sides here who put in a massive shift. Yeah, look, she's a player that's come up. Uh, she played on Capped with me in the Barbarians. God, that four years ago now, three and a half years ago now, and she certainly came in as a character and uh, really made her, her presence felt both on and off the pitch, and she's continued that with Ireland and likewise over in England with Wasps. <laughs> you can't shy away when you win the award. Well, look, for any player, it's, it's not about the award, it'll be about the win at the end of the day, and if Harling can hold out for the next 45 seconds, that's all she'll be worrying about. We've said it on a few occasions today, this is a pressurised fixture for both of these teams. If Ireland can just secure this ball, go through the phases, they'll work their way to a, a harder and a very narrow win here. Scotland, they'll struggle to come to terms with a game that might have well have been there for them. That Fabian Parsons try was a big turning point. They'll take positives from this one, but it's England to come next. Look, I think they've developed hugely in the style they're trying to play. I, I think they've two really exciting centres and they just need to be a bit more consistent. I suppose at times they've mastered their own downfalls, trying to force that pass or, you know, just trying to go wide when it wasn't on, just work through the phases. But I think come September, a little bit more time under the management, I, I think they'll be a different team again. Well, it's taken them a long time, Ireland, to put Scotland away. Dogged and obdurate opponents, and they haven't done it yet. Well, all they needed to do was secure that ball Three. and kick it into touch. Collapse. Linda and Jungang has been penalised for collapsing the scrum, and Scotland will have one more opportunity. They did it in first half stoppage time. Could they do it again? Yeah, their line hasn't been the most successful. It's a difficult position to find touch from first and foremost. And wisely, Lisa Thompson doesn't go for distance. Now it's midway between the halfway line and the Irish 22. Green. One last Green. roll of the dice, Philip Doyle back in Dublin. The man who guided Ireland to the 2013 Grand Slam victory. Is there one final card up the sleeve here? Lana Skeldon whose conversion got them within a score of winning this game. Has to hit the target here. Will Ireland contest it? They will. Oh, it's awkward ball. But it's secured at the tail of the lineup by Mary Forsyth. Mary MacDonald. Louise McMillan. Support gets there. MacDonald again. Scottish backline strung out across the pitch, waiting for ball to work with. It's short side though to Sarah Bonner. Little pop pass for Lisa Coburn. He drives straight at the two Irish tacklers. Have they spilled it? The Irish fans on this near side can see it. Ireland driving over it. Here's the chance to put it in touch, which they have done. It's over. Ireland have won a gripping Six Nations opener. What a contest that went right to the wire. And the reaction of Adam Griggs says it all. It was hard, hard work today, but Ireland have got it done. Yeah, look, they came out for the win. There was elements of the performance that were excellent, particularly in the first half. I don't think they matched it in the second half. They allowed Scotland back into the game far too easy. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's about that win, and they target this game. They targeted their three home games, and coming away with that win gives them good momentum going forward. Certainly, they'll have things to work on going into Wales next weekend, but, you know, take the win. They, it's taken them a while to get wins, so you'll cherish the ones you get. And a real and genuine outpouring of emotion here. 
Well, what a game. Scotland gave it all they had, but in the end, it's Ireland who have found a way to win by 18 points to 14. Live. Adel, congratulations. You are the Aon player of the match, and with your presentation on behalf of Aon is Mark Fields. Adel, the point has just been made on air. We can see it from the body language of these Irish players. That means a great, great deal to return to winning ways. Yeah, we had a, we had a big point to prove. You know, we worked very hard during the Novembers. Um, we were unfortunate not to get a win against Wales, but the girls have been putting in a lot of hard graft over over the winter months, so that result there today means a lot to us. In many ways, is it a case of bringing out onto the field of play what you know you're capable of behind the scenes? Uh, absolutely. Like the first 20 minutes, we came out all guns spades, and um, we had big clarity. There's a great there's a great camaraderie between the, the club, you know, within ourselves, and the girls are training week in week out together, and you know we're really gelling well, and that that showed there today. Even. Great resilience as well, just to see it out at the end. Yeah, I mean, how many times we defended our try line? I, you know, we we probably gave away a few penalties and that, but we just gritted it out. And then for Maven to turn that around into a scoring opportunity was just a reflection of the, the discipline in the team and uh, what we can do. Great support, as always. I know you've targeted these home games, so it's all eyes now on Wales, and hopefully pack Donnybrook even more next weekend. Yeah, the turnout is great. I don't think um, people realise that when a crowd comes here that really uh, eggs us on when we're, you know, defending our try line or we're on the attack in front, that, you know, that, that fills... Our, our game and we really feed off the crowd so it's great to get a turnout like this. It was a difficult championship last year. Is there a sense that there's much more to come from this squad? Uh, hugely. Like, I mean, this is our first game. It's never going to be pretty. Um, and at the start of front. Away now into our homework and iron out a few things that didn't do well for us but work on the stuff that really did. Congratulations on the win, Dan. Thanks for being with us. Cheers. Thank you. Damien standing by. Senator Ayupu, who took on captaincy duties in the second half. Great to be back to winning ways. Oh, yeah, look. It's a, it's a relief, to be honest. You know, we've been training uh, really well in the last uh, number of weeks, and we were super excited about this game, so we knew that we needed to put a performance in and to get the result. So today we're extremely pleased. Certainly a lot to work on, though. Uh, Scotland, fair play to them. They were a superb side today, really disciplined. I don't think they gave a penalty away after the first 20 minutes. So, you know, there's, there's a few work-ons for us, but, um, you know, full, fair credit to, uh, to Scotland as well. But great positives to take, particularly that early phase of the game.